Lord. The peace of Christ be with you. From the Guy's First family. The peace of Christ be with you. And the peace of Christ be with you, and guard your minds and hearts in Christ Jesus. May, May the, the peace of Christ, Christ be with you. you. God bless you. The, the peace of Christ be with you. From Christopher Kim and Dominic in Capsuar, Kenya. Good morning. Welcome to Vancouver First Christian Reformed Church. Once again, the virtual edition. Uh, my name's Chris. Many of you probably don't know me. Some of you do. Um, my wife and I attended Vancouver First from 2008 to 2010. Uh, and since that time, my wife and now our five-year-old son, Dominic, we've moved around a lot in the last few years. Um, and now we find ourselves here in beautiful western rural Kenya. Since that time, I've also become an ordained pastor in the Christian Reformed Church. Uh, but now I work as a, as a teacher at a theological school called the Capsuar School of Theology. And I train pastors in a denomination here in East Africa called the Africa Inland Church. My wife, Kim, uh, meanwhile, is uh, one of the only ob doctors for many miles around in a mission hospital here called the Capsuar Mission Hospital. If you're interested in our work and praying for us or supporting us in any way, uh, Pastor Trevor probably has some information about uh, the work we do, or you can look us up on the Christian Reformed Church's Resonate website. Um, and we'd appreciate uh, your prayers and any support you can you can offer us. But today I'm really happy to be back with you. I wish we could be face to face, but I'm happy to worship with you, worship with you in any in any way and uh, to guide you through a beautiful psalm, Psalm 96. Um, and this morning, as we explore Psalm 96. We're called to invite the whole world, all its people, and even the whole natural world to praise, into the praise of a glorious, just, and life-giving God. But before we begin exploring that psalm, let us practice praising our God in song.
Well, before we dive into God's word this morning, let's pray for his illumination of our reading. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, composed of words written long ago, which still resonate in our lives and in our world today. May your spirit connect these words to our hearts, that we may be formed to be like your Son in worship, in glory, and in justice. Amen. Now, this morning, uh, I hope it's okay. I wrote my own translation of our passage this morning to bring out some of the the themes that we're talking about this morning. Uh, And one other note, um, in our Bibles, we have the word Lord, L-O-R-D, in capital letters, usually in our English translations. And that stands for the, um, the... the proper covenant name of God that he gives to Moses at Sinai, and the word is actually Yahweh, also four Hebrew letters, Y-H-W-H. And so instead of Lord, I've kept the name Yahweh in, uh, in our reading this morning. Um, so now let us read Psalm 96. Sing a new original song to Yahweh. May the whole earth sing to Yahweh. Sing to Yahweh. Proclaim his reputation. Each day announce his deliverance. In the midst of the nations, speak of his glory. Tell of his glory among every people group. For Yahweh is great and absolutely worthy of worship. He should be feared more than any other gods. All the nation's gods are not worth your while. But Yahweh, he formed the heavens. He radiates beauty and brilliance. In his sacred space are power and splendor. Family, clans, tribes, ascribe to Yahweh. Ascribe to Yahweh glory and power. Ascribe to Yahweh the glory due his reputation. Lift up a gift and go into his courtyard. Worship Yahweh in sacred array. May the whole world quake before him. Say to the nations, Yahweh is king. The world has been founded, it won't be moved. He rules the nations with equity. The heavens are happy and the earth has joy. The full sea thunders. The fields and everything in them are elated. The forest trees are triumphant. All of this before Yahweh's face. He is coming. He comes to give justice to the earth. He gives justice to the world in righteousness. And he gives to the nations in integrity. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in our psalm this morning, the psalmist invites us to sing a new song. The biblical scholar Robert Alter says that what the psalmist means here by new is original. It's supposed to be fresh, creative praise, a poem in response to God's breaking into the world with a fresh grace that no one saw coming. But Alter then points out that the psalmist actually borrows lots of phrases from other psalms to compose this one. The psalm is kind of a a greatest hits of praise. The psalmist knew these other poems, hymns, and songs so well that they have shaped his own creative prayers. And this is a good thing. The psalmist seems to recognize that there are always those who have come before us who can teach us to relate rightly with the living God. Pure originality is not a virtue in the Christian faith. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Or to echo Stanley Hauerwas, originality is just forgetting where we got our best ideas. So let this be an encouragement for you. Borrow the words of Psalm 96 this week. Try to read it, pray it, praise with it every day. These words are a gift of God through this poet long ago so that you can be opened to the fullness of life, which is a relationship with God. So to help you on your way in journeying with God, with the psalmist, and with the words between God and the psalmist, let me highlight three three things the psalmist gives us for singing a new joyful song, even in difficult and dark times in which we find ourselves. First, this psalm calls us to recognize that we are privileged to be a part of a cosmic chorus. 
composed of all nations and even the whole natural world. And even more than that, we're invited to step into the role of the psalmist in calling all people and all things in the universe to praise God. In a sense, we, God's chosen people, are called to be cosmic choir directors. Now, this is the task of every Christian, to invite all people and all of the natural world into the praise of God. My family and I have moved halfway across the world to invite people to worship this loving and life-giving God. You in Vancouver have the world at your doorstep. Have good conversations with friends and neighbors who don't know this God yet. Invite them to church. Tell them about what God has done in your life. But how do we invite trees and rivers and animals to praise God? Uh, by helping them to flourish, by letting them be all that God has intended them to be, by celebrating the goodness of creation, by praising God for it, even in the midst of the pollution and abuse and exploitation that we often see in the nature around us. Now this week, go for a walk outside or even, even just open your window and ask God to show you how creation is already praising him. Uh, one second, I have to introduce you to my friend. This is uh, Nala. Nala, can you say hi? Nala had a little surgery this week uh, to make sure that she doesn't flourish too much. Uh, there's already too many dogs in the world, so Nala will be, not be having puppies. Anyways, that's part of stewardship too. All right. Nala didn't like to be on video. All right. Second point, why does creation sing? Why can it? Why can we humans praise God? Because the psalmist says, God is worthy of praise. Spending time and energy praising God is worth our while. And he is worth our while for two reasons. First, because he is our rescuer. He has rescued us from sin and death and evil. For some of us, more than that. Some of us, he's pulled out of poverty, out of an abusive situation or addiction. And even now, during a sad and dark time in our world, God is working to make the world right and good. This doesn't mean that in the near future, we won't be met with challenging times, but it does mean that somehow God will weave all of this sadness and brokenness into his ultimate purposes to bless his, us, his followers, and to bless the world. We don't quite know how that will work out, but he invites us to trust that this is what he's doing. At the same time, the psalmist calls us to recognize that false gods are not worth our while. They're full of empty promises and lead us away from God's fuller life. The season of COVID has certainly revealed our idols, hasn't it? We realize that we can't necessarily trust those in power to be competent and compassionate and work in the best interests of the people they're called to serve. We can't watch sports as a convenient distraction from the difficulties of life. We can't always get coffee from our favorite place with high levels of sugar and caffeine to give us artificial happiness and energy. Alternately though, secondly, the psalmist invites us to simply delight in God himself. The psalmist invites us to imagine God's glory. The psalmist says in verse 6 that God radiates beauty and brilliance. In his sacred space are power and splendor. This week, wherever you see beauty and brilliance and power and splendor, say to yourself, God's kind of like that, but infinitely more so. All that's glorious in our world is a dim reflection of his ultimate glory. Spend time with the biblical visions of God from Isaiah and Ezekiel and Revelation. Pay attention to the details, the colors, the cherubim, what these people see and experience and carry these visions with you. Then just think about that this is the God who dwells in light inaccessible, inexpressible, and yet he funneled his glory into a human body and then he died and rose again for our sake. The third reason that we can sing a new song 
is that God is king of our lives and of our broken but beloved world. And further, the psalmist says, this king is coming. It was true for the psalmist thousands of years ago, and it is true in 2020. It turns out that monarchy is in fact the perfect form of government, but only if the monarch is perfect and perfectly loving. In so much of our world, we encounter leaders who will do whatever it takes to stay in power, even stepping on the people they have been called to serve. But in the God of the Bible, we see a God who is perfectly just. In Jesus, we see a king who does not kill those who oppose him, but dies for the sins of the rebellious world so that they can be freed from sin and death and evil. Sin and death and evil no longer claim to have the final word in our world. Instead, faith and hope hold us in this broken present, and love will ultimately win the day. And this is good news. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Now Vancouver First Christian Reformed Church. In this week, may the Holy Spirit help you to recognize that you are invited to praise a glorious, just, and coming King, and that you can invite all people and all of the natural world into that cosmic chorus. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.